Welcome, welcome everybody. Just sometimes takes a moment for everybody's Zoom to load and I can see everybody filtering in. It's a beautiful waterfall of people. My name is Stephanie. I am part of Take Me Outside alongside here with Hillary, um, who will be helping kind of behind the scenes today. Um, and we have also Robert and Sarah Ann with us today. I'll uh, just do a quick intro to Take Me Outside and Take Me Outside Week, and then uh, not spend too much time and we'll get right into it. So it's really lovely to have everybody here. I know it's webinar style, so we can't see all of your beautiful faces, uh, but we know that you're there, we can see you there. And there is a little reaction button. If you have the ability to use it, you can use it and show your gratitude that way. There's hearts and thumbs up and things like that. We love to see that form of participation. So this is our first uh, session of Take Me Outside Week 2023. So welcome. It's so, so lovely to have you all here. If you've been to one of our events before, it's really great to have you back again. And if this is your first time, welcome. So, so good to have you. This is the 13th time Take Me Outside Day has happened. It's grown into an entire week of events. And now we have uh, Monday to Friday, different speakers and activities and things like that. Um, it started 13 years ago when Take Me Outside's uh, executive director, Colin Harris, ran across Canada. And um, this was the day that he finished his run to uh, encourage folks to spend more time outside. And that's really what Take Me Outside is all about. It's about uh, encouraging everyone to uh, think about learning beyond the four walls of a classroom and to just head right outside and whatever that looks like for you. So uh, hopefully after today, you or after this presentation, you will also feel inspired to go head on outside today and through the whole week. And yeah, wonderful. Feel free to use the chat, the q and I will do a quick Zoom intro in a second here. Um, and if you want to say hello in the chat, we love that. We welcome that. And uh, as a way to kind of situate us and start us off today, um, please feel free to write in the chat where you're writing in from, the traditional territories where you're writing in from, uh, if you know that. And if you don't, uh, native-land.ca is a great resource to learn about um, the territory of which you're on. I'm calling in from Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada, and uh, specifically I'm on Coatzin territory, unceded traditional territory, uh, Cowichan tribes and the Hokaminum speaking people. And I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I just recently learned a Hokaminum word for the month of October when the leaves fall is Hui Seleno. So welcome, it is mid October and the leaves are probably falling where you are. So please share where you're joining in from. We do love to see that. And we know that within the realm of outdoor learning, uh, land-based learning, uh, it's it's essential, it's foundational to acknowledge the traditional territory uh, that you're learning on and the people who have been part of that land since time immemorial. And it's lovely to see everybody writing into the chat right now. So I'll do a quick Zoom intro here and then I will pass it over. Uh, so yes, I can see a lot of people using the chat. You can either be typing to everyone or to hosts and panelists. So feel free to change that setting based on who you want your chat to reach. You can ask questions in the chat. You can also ask questions using the Q&A box, uh, which is another option at the bottom of your screen. And you can upvote different questions if you see a question that you would also like to ask and have that be answered. We are drawing for prizes at the end. We have six awesome prizes and we're going to be choosing prize winners based on who has asked questions. So if you want a chance to win a prize, think of a question, add it into the chat or the Q&A box and you'll be entered to win one of the prizes. So stay till the end for that. This is all gonna be recorded as well. So if you have to leave early or your internet drops off or something like that, then the recording will be available afterwards. We'll send it to you. It'll be on our uh, TMO Day page. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. All right, so uh, check your spam folder if you are missing any of those communications or anything like that and ask questions in the chat, all of that. Closed captions should be available if you need them. They may be under the more button on your Zoom window and you should be able to uh, use the settings to enable the captions, a transcript um, and all the things like reactions and all of that. 
And if the chat previews are coming up and are distracting you, you can also change, uh, you can turn that off if, if you don't want the chat coming up. Okay. That's all from me for now. And I am really, really happy to uh, be working with many outdoor learning partners and organizations through this work. And Strong Nations uh, is an amazing organization, also based on Vancouver Island here, but uh, their, their presence extends much beyond the island. And I am really grateful for Strong Nations for helping us connect to um, Sarah Ann and Indigenous authors that we have connected with throughout um, other Take Me Outside days as well. So I'm going to pass it over to Cole Talton, Robert Goldsmith, to say a few words and also to introduce us to Sarah Ann. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, my traditional name is Cole Talton, and my English name is Robert Goldsmith. Uh, I live in the Sinemo territory in Vancouver Island. Um, I work for a company called Strong Nations Publishing, and we are own, Indigenous owned and operated. We publish just around 400 uh, Indigenous authentic resources for classroom and just for trade books. Um, we also are an online store, so we have just over 6,000 titles on our online store, and you can order online. And I believe Stephanie is going to share the link for us. Um, I've been with this company for just about four years, and it's great to see how much it's grown and how much the other provinces have picked up uh, Strong Nations and have supported and, 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 you know, just, it's crazy to see how much things have changed, especially in the last two years with uh, people looking for authentic resources. Stories were always written, but they were never really written from our side. And they were written by non-Indigenous people who, uh, you know, studied or worked with some elders, maybe in the community, but it's nice to have authentic Indigenous writers come to us and bring their ideas, bring their teachings, bring their creation stories and the ways of their people. Um, I myself am from Cowichan Tribes, which is where Stephanie is located. Um, Sarah Ann approached us, I believe, 18 months ago. Uh, she came into our offices and just met with me and uh, my colleague, Topher Beaton. And uh, it was great to meet her. And she brought a book idea. And I'm glad that it came to fruition. We were able to publish this book and her works and she is a great author very bright the teachings in the book are very good um it's been a very well received book and everybody's looking forward to the other three titles that are going to be uh involved with this series uh, so i'm going to pass you off to sarah ann who's the author and uh welcome sarah ann Miigwech, Robert, for that wonderful introduction. Um, Buzu Ani, my name is Sarah Ann uh, Tarand. I am currently on unceded Sekhumic territory, which is where I live, but I am from, my traditional lands are Treaty 4 in Manitoba. My I belong to Gambler First Nation, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here with you today and to share my book with you. I like to keep my introduction short because I know sometimes in Indigenous circles, our, our uh, introductions become the entire presentation. But uh, I want to share my book with you today. So my book is called You Are Sacred. And I'm going to start off by explaining what the word sacred means. Because as I've um, shared this book, I've come to realize that this word is not a commonly used word with a lot of children. So you are, are sacred means special, important um precious worthy of respect and love and what's really interesting about the teaching in my culture about being sacred is there's no requirements to be sacred you are sacred just in existence and what's beautiful about being sacred is being sacred is what connects us to everything around us so the the trees the air the water the earth, all the animals, even down to the little insects are all sacred and all important parts of the land. And what's interesting about that connection to us all being sacred is it teaches us that we are not just living on the land, but that we are the land. So when we speak about being sacred and being at all connected, or maybe you've heard the term ulnar relations, 
from other indigenous groups. It means that we are all related because the land is within us. When we breathe, we breathe in the same air that moves through the leaves on the trees. When we feel our pulse beneath our skin, that blood is made of the same water that makes up the lakes and the oceans and the rivers. When our heart beats in our chest, it's the same rhythm as hooves across the earth. So all of those things are um, symbols of the fact that we not just live on the land, but that we are the land. So this book, You Are Sacred, speaks towards that teaching that we are connected to the land and no matter where you are and who you are and what your life looks like, you can always find support in the land. The land will always hold you. You can always go to the land um, to remind you that you are sacred. So I'm going to begin to read this book. And I wrote this book because I have a three-year-old and I wanted him to learn about where to find healing before he had to learn what we were healing from as Indigenous people. Okay. When Grandfather Sun rises and his warm rays kiss your face, he shares them to remind you that you are sacred. When Eagle calls as you pass by, do you know what he's saying? You are sacred. When butterflies flutter and hover nearby, they choose to land upon you because you are sacred. When you walk through the forest canopied by leaves, the trees whisper, you are sacred. When you move through the day with your ancestors at your side, they watch over you because you are sacred. When you dip your toes into Mother Earth's cool waters, the shiver that runs through you is a message that says, you are sacred. As the air turns cold, your breath appears to tell you that you are sacred. When a rock glimmers at your feet and catches your eye, it reveals itself to you because you are sacred. When you're tucked into bed at night, Grandmother Moon shines her light upon you because she knows you are sacred. So that's the end of the story. And I realized as I was reading it, I didn't, I don't think I introduced my nation, but I'm Anishinaabe and Métis. These teachings are Anishinaabe teachings um, that I have learned through working with elders and reconnecting to my culture. Um, so one of the teachings that um, is really the core belief in my entire life and this book series is the medicine meal. So the medicine wheel is used as guidance in my culture and many indigenous cultures to find balance in our life. So these four quadrants represent the four different parts that make up who we are. And this book, You Are Sacred, is um, an example of the spiritual quadrant. So it teaches us to find spiritual wellness and through that, a spiritual connection to the land. So I don't know if you noticed as I was reading through this book, but everything in this book has a face, all the illustrations. And when I decided to write this book, I decided to illustrate it because I really wanted to carry that teaching over into the illustrations. So I'll just find a good example of that. So as you see here, his breath, his breath is alive because it teaches us that everything has a spirit. And 
our sacredness is what connects us, but our sacredness comes from our spirit. Our spirit is like the fire that is in within us that makes us who we are, that lights up our eyes. So this book is about taking care of our spiritual wellness and connecting to the land in a spiritual way. So there's a lot of symbols in this book that represent the spiritual quadrant of the medicine meal. The first is um, in my culture, we connect the eagle to the spiritual quadrant. And as you saw on one of the pages of the book that we have eagle there. And the word for eagle in my language is Nagizi. And eagle is a very um, important part and a very sacred animal to us in the Anishinaabe culture because the eagle comes down when you have wishes or prayers, it comes and takes those wishes or prayers and takes them up into the sky to make sure that they come true. So the eagle does that because it's the animal, the bird that flies highest in the sky. The eagle is also very important to me because I belong to Eagle Clan. And as an Eagle Clan member, it is my duty here on Mother Earth to share these teachings, to share um, ways to help other people heal, to find healing, to heal the land, to be connected to one another. Um, the eagle is also represented by love in the grandfather teachings. So um, there's a lot I could, I could go on and on about the grandfather teachings, but maybe after we're done here today, you can look up the seven grandfather teachings. Um, another thing that's represented here is um, fire and the sun. The sun rises in the east and the spiritual quadrant is almost like well, life runs in a circle, but the spiritual quadrant is seen as the baby, the new life form of the medicine wheel. So the this book represents that. There's a young, there's a sun that rises. It goes through the entire day of sacred, as who I call the main character in this book. Um, the sun also represents fire, which is the element that is related to the spiritual quadrant. So now that we've learned a little bit about um, the spiritual quadrant, I also wanted to share with you each part of the medicine wheel has a medicine or a plant medicine that's related to it. And the plant medicine that's related to this portion of the medicine meal is tobacco. So tobacco in my culture is used as a way to show gratitude to the land and to give an offering before we take anything. So if you've ever heard of the word reciprocal, reciprocal is a word that means um, equal to make sure when you are in relationships with something, the land, other people, that it's equal, that there's not um, there's an equal give and take. So we use tobacco in my culture or stemma, as we call it in my language, to show that gratitude to the land, to show, um, to give thanks. So something I'd like you to do today, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a couple homework assignments today, but the first one being, um, when we're done today at some point, um, I would like you to give an offering to the land. It doesn't have to be tobacco, but maybe it's a um, a food offering, or maybe it's just a little trinket or a drawing that you do, but something that you can make or give to the land to show your gratitude for your connection to the land, for all your relations here that give you a sacred medicine. So the other portions of the medicine wheel are the mental, our mind, our thoughts, our physical, our body, our physical body, and our emotions, our heart, our emotions, our feelings. So all these four parts of us, our spirit, our mind, our body, and our emotions, our heart, are all the different parts that make up who we are. So we, um, when we take care of all four parts of ourselves, we are in balance. We are in balance with ourselves, in balance with the land. And not only do we have these four parts to ourselves, but everything on earth has these four parts, right? Even a plant has a physical body. It has a spirit. It has emotions too. It has thoughts, we believe sometimes as well. So I'm going to share a yoga practice with you now that um, is going to teach us a little bit more about uh, about the medicine meal and specifically the spiritual part of the medicine meal. So I'm just going to readjust my camera here so you can see. Okay, so you have to excuse me as well. I'm I'm very tall, so you're not going to get to see my whole body in some of the uh, parts of the yoga. But wherever you are, I'd like you just to start by taking a seat on the earth 
crisscross applesauce. And I'll give you a moment here just to settle in and to get into that position. And once you're in that position, I just want you to begin to focus on your breath, that sacred exchange we have with the trees. Filling your lungs up with that exchange, that reciprocal relationship we have with trees and plants for a moment. Just begin to notice all of the elements of nature that are around you. Maybe you have, can hear a breeze moving through the leaves. Maybe there's a bird chirping or cawing in the background. Maybe you can feel the coolness of the air against your skin or the warmth of the sun. Maybe you can smell the earth or if there was a fresh rain, maybe you can smell that. Now that we're starting to settle in, we are gonna begin this yoga practice by acknowledging all those four parts of ourselves. And we're gonna share gratitude. So we talked about tobacco is our way of showing gratitude to the land. So now we're going to use our breath to show gratitude to ourselves. So gratitude is a way of thanks, showing thanks, of being thankful. So we're gonna start by placing our hands on our heads and taking a big breath in through our nose and out through our mouth. And we're gonna do that one more time bringing that warmth of gratitude to our thoughts and our mind. One big breath in and all the way out. And again, we're gonna do it four times at each part of ourselves. Big breath in and all the way out. And one last time. Now let's take and place our hands on our hearts to show gratitude to our emotion, our hearts, our feelings. So let's take four breaths here to show our gratitude to our heart, our emotion. One. Two. Three. And now let's take and place our hands right here on our ribs. That's where our spirit lives in us. So breathing into this part of ourselves for breath to bring gratitude to our spirit. One more breath here. And now let's take and place our hands on our lower belly to bring thanks and great gratitude to our body. So when we breathe here, let's breathe all the way down into our belly so that we push our hands out of the breath. In and as we exhale, you can feel your hands shrinking closer to you. So four breaths. Two more. Beautiful. So now that we've showed gratitude to all four parts of ourselves, let's move into a movement practice. Taking an inhale, reach your arms up. And then as you exhale, we're gonna come down onto our hands and knees, then tuck our toes and send our hips up towards the sky. Once you're here, we are going to do something called a sun salutation. So we're going to start in a standing position. And as you're moving into a standing position, we're going to talk a little bit about a sun salutation. So a sun salutation is a series of movements or postures that are used in yoga to show gratitude to the sun or the rising of the sun, the beginning of each day. 
So like I said, I'm very tall, so you can't see my face right now, but you'll be able to see and get the gist of what I'm doing here. So let's stand in mountain pose, feeling your feet grounded to the earth. Fingertips reaching down and our spine is nice and long. The tops of our heads reaching for the clouds. On your next breath, let's take an inhale, reach your hands up. And then exhale, let's forward fold and bring your hands to your knees, making your back nice and straight. Once you've done that, you can place your hands on the earth as you exhale. Step your toes back and find a plank position. Once you're here, take an inhale, pushing down into the earth. And then as you exhale, we're going to slowly lower our chest down to the ground. Take an inhale, peel your heart up to the sun. And then exhale, tuck your toes and send your hips back up. So that is a sun salutation. We're going to start again and we're going to do that three more times. Walking your hands back towards you, finding that standing position. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, finding that halfway lift, hands on the knees. Exhale, walking the hands out, finding that plank position. You can lower to your knees too, if that feels good. Inhale, pressing down into the earth, and as you exhale, slowly lowering your chest down. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, tuck your toes, send your hips back up to the sky to find down the three feet above. Once you're here, let's start from the top again. Walk your hands back towards you. Find that standing position. You should feel that inner fire within you beginning to build, heat starting to build in your body. So two more times. Inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk your hands out. Find that plank position. Inhale, press into the earth. Exhale, slowly lower yourself. Inhale, feel your heart up. Exhale, finding that downward facing dog. So we're going to do that one last time. And this time I'm going to challenge you to just follow your own breath. And you can watch me as I move through it too. But see if you can remember those four movement patterns. So taking an inhale, let's begin. We'll all meet in down or facing dog. Walk our hands back towards ourselves and meet in a standing position. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of myself in here. Oh, that's a little better. So we're going to meet back in a standing position. So we talked a lot about that reciprocal relationship we have with the trees. So we're going to bring that gratitude to the trees by doing a posture called tree pose. So we're going to balance on one foot. It doesn't matter where you start. And place your foot anywhere to the inside of your standing leg. Your hands could be in prayer in front of you, or you can roll your branches out and let that breeze come through the leaves on your trees. Good. Exhale, let's release that foot down and we'll move into that same shape. On the other side, placing the foot to the inside of the standing leg, feeling that standing leg root down into the earth. Reaching the arms out, feeling the breeze move through the branches. Good. Now place that foot down. And if you can remember the animal that is related to this portion of the medicine meal is eagle. So we are going to be a sleepy eagle. So let's balance on one foot again, crossing our knee over our standing leg. Maybe the toe tucks behind the shin, maybe it stays crossed sitting a little bit deeper in, and then we're going to take our arms and wrap them around each other as well. Like our eagle wings are wrapping around each other, like we're nesting here, taking a rest. One big breath. Exhale, open your arms. Balancing on the next foot, keeping those eagle wings nice and spread, crossing the other knee over the other stunning leg, and then we're going to Twist our wings as well. Good. One big breath. 
and then exhale, open the arms and spread your eagle wings as far as they can go. And then we're going to cross our ankles and come to sit on our yoga mats or the ground or wherever you're sitting. So once you find that seat, we're gonna end this practice with something called a moon salutation. So at the end of the book, you saw Grandmother Moon there. Um, so this is a sequence of movements to show gratitude to the moon. And we are at a really interesting time of year because the moon is doing a lot of fun things this month. So we just had a solar eclipse on Saturday. We have a full moon coming up and a lunar eclipse. There's a lot of things happening this month. So keeping that in mind, the gratitude of all the beautiful things that Grandmother Moon shows us. And when you're ready, see, finding that nice tall seat, we're gonna inhale, reach our arms up, and then exhale, bring them down to the earth. Nice big inhale to make the back nice and long. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, we're gonna bring our hand down to the earth or our mat and reach the other one up and over like a crescent moon. Take a big breath. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, we're gonna go to the other side. Finding that moon pose. Inhale, reaching up. And this time as you exhale, we're gonna take one hand and bring it across our body to the outside of our leg and take a look over our shoulder. Keeping your spine nice and tall. And then inhale, come back, reaching your arms up. And then exhale, we're going to cross our other arm across our body and look over our third shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. And this time we're going to take and clasp our hands behind us and create some space between your lower back and your hands. Inhale, find some nice height in your spine. And then exhale, we're going to fold forward again, letting your hands reach up towards the sky. Good. Inhale. Let's come back to start. And just like with the sun salutations, we're going to do this four times. We have three more left. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Fold. Inhale. Reach. Exhale. Other side. Getting that crescent moon shape. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, reach. Exhale, twist. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands clasp behind you. With your inhale, lift your heart, and then exhale, coming into that forward fold, reaching our hands up. Inhale, come back to center, reach your hands up. We have two more. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold to the side. And reach. And twist with an exhale. Inhale, reach. Exhale, twist. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, hands come to clasp. Lift your heart to the sky. And then find a forward fold. Inhale, coming back up. Let's do it one last time. We're going to follow our own rhythm of breath again. Really feeling that gratitude for our connection to the land and giving thanks to all of our relations. So inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold.
Beautiful. Keep breathing. And as you exhale, let's all finish together. You can bring your hands onto your thighs. And if you're feeling draw, like you want to go inward, keep your palms down. If you'd like to receive from the people around you, bring your hands up. And we're just going to take a moment to find gratitude for all of our relations, the trees, the animals, the plants, the air, the water, all this sacred life that's around us and all the sacred life that connects us to one another. So in my language, we say chi miigwech, to say thank you. So chi miigwech, and a lot of uh, times we also say all my relations to acknowledge the gratitude for all of our relations. So together, let's say chi miigwech and all my relations. Oh, thank you for doing yoga with me. Uh, I love yoga. I've been doing yoga for a lot longer than I've been writing books. I've been teaching yoga to kids for a lot longer than that as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the second homework assignment that I'm going to give you today. So the second homework assignment I'm going to give you today is to create some art with elements of nature. So what I've been doing here with uh, a connection to my book is I have been creating art. So I'm not sure if any of you know this or if any of you are in the same area as me, but we had a lot of forest fires this year. And when there's forest fires, um, there's a lot of ending of life to the trees. But just like we learned on the medicine meal, life is cyclical. Life goes in a circle. So what I am doing with this book is I am going out into the forest and finding the wood burn and the trees to give a second life to allow the spirit of the trees to live on through my art. So you can find, maybe you live in an area where there's some forest fires, or maybe you can have a fire tonight with your family, a campfire, and take the embers from the fire and create some art with the charcoal to show gratitude to the trees, to give a second life to the spirit of the trees, and to allow your art to be a place for the tree's spirit to live. So I'm not drawing anything fancy here, but it's just a great way to explore. You can smell the wood, you can feel the charcoal, see it on your hands. And it's a really beautiful way to connect with the spirit of the land by allowing the land to live through your art. So if you don't have access to charcoal or campfire, or um, if you're not in an area where there was a lot of wood burn, then maybe there's another element that you'd like to connect with with the earth. So water, water is another beautiful thing that you can make art with. Um, clay, um, just go out onto the land and see what you can find and let that land, but try don't, I, what I would ask though is to not pick anything that's alive. So try to find like maybe leaves that have fallen to the ground, maybe, um, dead twigs or something like that. So finding something on the earth that is no longer um, full of life to give it life with your art. So that's my homework assignment that I'm going to give you. And now I'm going to open up the floor to ask some questions. I'm just gonna get into my comfy chair again so I can see the screen. Thank you so much, Sarah Ann. And Thank I hope you. everyone enjoyed that. There's been so many questions coming in, which is fantastic. And maybe everyone else is also getting comfy That's right true. now yeah. <laughs> after doing yoga together. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Great way to start taking out side week. And I'm going to, so there's lots and lots of questions coming in. Um, and also, yeah, there's little heart reaction coming in beautiful um I'm gonna condense some of the questions into um one sort of thing because some people are asking similar things through their questions so I thank you so much for everyone who's uh, taking that time to think about um what came up for them during the book reading and during the yoga practice um people are really interested to start sort of 
maybe from the book reading first, people are really interested about um, kind of your inspiration and just any part of the process of writing the book, kind of like how long it took and, you know, who did you write? Did you draw the pictures in it? And, you know, what inspired you and all of those kinds of things. So anything you want to speak to about the okay. book itself, people are interested. I will talk, I could talk about this book for a long time. I, <laughs> so like I said, I have a three-year-old son. And when I was pregnant, I was pregnant in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. And so I spent a lot of time looking for things to buy my unborn baby. And one of the things that was really important to me because I didn't grow up with my culture. My family was really disconnected from our community, from our culture, um, from our identities as indigenous people. And for me, when I, um, decided to have children or to have a child what was really important to me is that he or they whoever that my child grew up in their culture that my child grew up knowing who they were growing up knowing who their ancestors were growing up um being proud of being indigenous because I didn't get to grow up like that I grew up uh, with a lot of shame around my I'm, I'm sorry the traffic uh, around my indigenous identity so for me having my child find pride in his, in his identity and, and in his culture was healing, not just for him, but for me as well. And for, you know, the seven generations that follow uh, for my ancestors who were not connected to their culture, for my family members that are still living that are just now reconnecting back to who we are. So when I was looking for books um, about our culture, what I noticed was two things. The first was that a lot of the books were too long for the uh, attention span of a preschool age child for um, a toddler or a baby. And the second thing I noticed is that they were all very sad. A lot of the books about Indigenous culture and a lot of the times what we are known for is for all the terrible things that have happened to us as Indigenous people here on Turtle Island. So for me, it was really important to write a book that represented more than what colonization has inflicted upon us, but rather the beauty in our culture and the um, vibrance of uh, who we are as Indigenous people and the joy that we have. Because as much as, as much terrible things that have happened to Indigenous people here on Turtle Island, I have not ever met an Indigenous person that's not full of knowledge, that is not, uh, does not make me laugh, and that, that is not deeply connected to the land. And so for me, um, on top of being Indigenous, I'm also very, um, the, the earth and the land mean a lot to me. And I really feel like connecting people, including children, to the land and helping people realize that they um, don't just live on the land, but that they are the land is our way of, of preserving ooh, earth and preserving um, what is left and helping heal the land. So I wrote this book, um, and this is actually my son, uh, uh, an illustration version of my son. And that's also why my son is mixed race, as I am too. My partner is white. So I wanted to represent a different type of Indigenous person. I myself am not a stereotypical looking Indigenous person. So I wanted to exemplify that in my illustrations as well. But Indigenous people, we are not monolithic, which is a word that means all the same. We all are very different looking. We are all different mixes. We don't all look the same. So I wanted to represent that in an illustration of the book. Um, my son's name is Darren. And uh, I, I also didn't share my spirit name is Walks with Buffalo. My son's spirit name is Wingash Makwa, which is sweet grass bear. Um, and uh, so yes, I wanted to make this book for him. So initially, when I made this book, I made this book just for my own child. And after I made it, I, I wanted to share it with other people because I had friends who had read my book and I did, I self-published it first and it had a lot of traction. A lot of people really, the, the message resonated with them. Um, how long it took me to make this? So that's a difficult question because I was never planning on publishing this book really initially when I created it. Um, but the illustrations, because this is actually, and I've noticed this now that I've I'm an illustrator is this is a, a hand illustrated book. And now we are living in a time where a lot of illustrations are done digitally. So each page of this book probably took me three to four drafts before I finished the final page. So I would say it took me about 
six months to, from beginning to end to write and illustrate this book. Um, and then once I came on with Strong Nations, we did some adjustments to it to make it a part of a book series because when I initially wrote this, it wasn't a part of a book series about the medicine meal. Um, so we made some adjustments to that. And so from beginning to end of the I, this book being an idea to being a published work was about two years. Um, and my son's three now. So uh, yeah, it, it was quite, uh, but I always encourage people to, if, if you want, if you have an idea, do it. Like that's the only thing stopping you from writing a book and publishing a book is you. So if you have an idea, make it, make a book. Like no one's stopping you. I think that you could, um, anybody can make a book, even if it's just for yourself, even if it's stapled on the corners, I encourage you to work with that creativity. Maybe that's something you want to start today with the art project that we've done, that we're, I've given you as homework. I think that Amazing. should cover everything about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have so many questions. We, we won't even be able to cover everything that everyone wants to know, but we'll try, you know, we, we do have some more time, but yeah, thank you so much for that. That, that answers a lot about the book. And I think it leads a little bit into talking about connecting to the land and how, you know, what that relationship looks like for each different person. And um, people were asking about, um, you know, how do they connect to the land? Maybe they're not indigenous, but they want to learn how to connect to the land. And also does, does yoga fit into that? Like is yoga a way to connect to the land and how, the, and what your relationship um, is in that sense too? So like I said, when I wrote this book and I realized that it should be shared with more people, I, I'm a big believer that we all have more alike than we do have um, differences uh, as, as human beings. So, um, and it, you don't have to be indigenous to, to, to be connected to the land. We as humans, we are a part of nature. We are a part of the land, no matter what your cultural or um, your background is or who you come from, who your ancestors are, all of us come from land. So one of the things that I do with adults um, in my work is I ask, who, do you know who your answers ask, who your ancestors are, what land you're connected to. So um, indigenous people of Turtle Island, we are connected to this land of Turtle Island. This is where we come from. But, you know, people come from all over the place. The word indigenous is an interesting word because um, it, it actually describes all of us. We are all indigenous to land, to a certain piece of land. So I would go home. My first step, I would say, would to be connect to where you're from, who you're from, who your ancestors are, what land your ancestors came from. So we all come from different parts of the world. We're all indigenous to different parts of the world. So understanding what part of the earth we belong to is a great first step. Another thing you can do right now is just Remember, when you're outside in nature and you're breathing, remember that that is because of the trees. The trees and us, we exchange. Our, our exhales are the trees' inhales. Our inhales are the trees' exhales. So just remembering that as you go out into to nature. And then that piece of being reciprocal. So I think for me, that is the most important part of um, bringing people back to the understanding that we aren't just living on the land, but that we are the land is reciprocal so reciprocal like i said it means to be equal in an equal relationship with the land so we're not taking more than the land can give us which is what's happening right now in the earth and some people might look but you know there's 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 a lot of extraction happening in the land right now um the oil industry the logging industry there's a lot of extraction happening from the land and she's sick now there's forest fires there's floods there's all these things happening that might feel a little scary but all of those things that are happening our mother earth, she's trying to recalibrate her system. She's low, she's living too. So when we are in a reciprocal relation, relationship with the land, we're not taking more than we need. We're not taking more than is offered. And what I was always taught is that when you commune with the land to leave it better than you left it and to only leave your good intentions and your gratitude behind. So if you go for a hike or if you go for a walk, making sure we're not littering, making sure we're not taking something from the land. Um, and and also considering whose land you're on, right? Who Whose people are connected to the land. So I, despite being indigenous, I'm a guest here on Tacoma territory. So when I go out onto the land, I keep that in mind. I don't pick any plants. I don't, um, 
move anything, I remember that I'm a guest here. This is not the land that my people are connected to. So I treat this land just as I want people to treat my traditional territory. So that comes back to learning where you're from. How would you like people to treat the land that you are from? So I hope that answers. Everybody here is connected to the land and it really is a personal practice of how you can connect with the land. So for, uh, for me, it's offering tobacco. Um, for my husband who's settler, it's just being mindful of, of, of whose territory he's on. Um, it's, it's, it's a personal thing. It's creating a relationship with the land around you. So just like you make friends at school or you um, have a relationship with your parents or your grandparents or your family, it's creating that relationship with the earth. That's, that is what matters is creating a relationship, right? Treating, mm -hmm. treating the land as if you, how you'd like it to treat you um, and then with yoga so for me yoga is a way for that I connect to the land it's also a way that I can share the my own teachings in a way that resonates that a lot of people can understand so I've been a yoga teacher for six years and I um I started teaching yoga in indigenous communities and to children because that is for me I believe like, I guess the what I could say with yoga and how it connects to the land is taking care of yourself is the first step to taking care of each other. And if we can take care of each other, then we can all work together to take care of the land. So taking yoga is the step of taking care of yourself. So when, you know, we can take care of ourselves, we can take care of each other, we can build strong communities, which can then we can all start working together to take care of and tend to the land just as she does us, right? So that is... I guess the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. And also just echoing the thank yous that are coming through the chat. I know the chat and the Q&A have been very busy, but there's been so much gratitude and so many thanks offered through there as well. Um, and I think we have time for one, maybe two more questions. We'll see. Um, and a lot of them have been about, uh, you mentioned tobacco briefly there in terms of an offering and in terms of sacred medicine. And people have kind of been asking about that generally, but also a lot of questions about the medicine wheel, um, tons of different questions about the medicine wheel, but you know, are those things connected and, and how can folks either learn more about the medicine wheel or just in, engage with it more? And that's a good question. So, I mean, shameless plug, you can always read my book. And this, this, this book is a part of a book series that I'm creating with Strong Nations that is going to have a book that relates to each portion of the medicine wheel. Um, so the medicine wheel, and it, you know, the medicine wheel is different. It's, it, it's a common thread through a lot of indigenous cultures here on Turtle Island, but there, it's very specific to different um, nations. Like I'm pretty sure the Cree, they have blue instead of black. Um, and the medicine wheel, it represents everything. The medicine wheel can be um, seen through any lens. So oh, let, well, let me talk about, I guess, a little bit. That's a big question. So I encourage you to look up. So the area or the territory that you're on, Google medicine or Ojibwe medicine wheel, um, Sequemic medicine wheel, um, Cree medicine wheel. Learning about the medicine wheel of the land that you're on is a great place to start. But I can share a little bit more about the medicine wheel of my own people. Um, and if I had more time, like there is there is an origin story of what the colors mean. And they do um, represent the different um, people of the earth, of the meeting, of the lands. It's, it's a quite cool story that maybe one day, maybe I'll be invited into one of your classrooms and I can share that with you. Um, so we talked about the different elements or the different parts of ourselves that it represents. So each part of the medicine wheel also has an element that's related to it. So a different part of the earth. So the spiritual quadrant is fire. The emotional quadrant is earth. The physical is water and the mental is air. So those are the elements. There's also medicine. So like we said, tobacco is related to the spiritual quadrant with the emotional. It is cedar is the medicine so you maybe you've heard of the four sacred medicines so the four sacred medicines relate to a different part of the medicine wheel so spiritual is tobacco emotional is cedar physical is sage and mental is sweet grass so I'll, maybe some of you have heard of smudging 
So when we smudge and we use those different medicines to smudge, those are to cleanse the different parts of ourselves. So when we smudge with sage, which is a really common smudging medicine, that's to cleanse our body, to cleanse our physical body. Um, you can use sweetgrass to cleanse your mind if you're having a lot of thoughts. Um, and cedar is good for your emotions, good for um, taking care of your emotions. So it also is cyclical, right? So we talked about that too. So the spiritual quadrant is kind of like, there's no beginning and end to the medicine wheel, but if there was, this would be the beginning. And the spiritual quadrant is um, it taught, is the Eastern quadrant. So they're also the four sacred directions. So we have East, North, West, and South. This is different parts of the medicine wheel. Um, and so the sun is, it, it also exemplifies a day. So the sun, it rises in the east beginning of the day and it moves through the day and the sun sets in the west, right? So it's black. So this light color is like this beginning of the day. The black is like the night, maybe. There's a lot of different interpretations that you can take from the medicine wheel. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, so yeah, so there's, this represents baby, youth, adult, and elder, the different parts of our lives, the different um, ages that we go through, the different seasons. So there's spring, summer autumn and winter and if you do have this book it actually has little teachings on it too like you can see each of the quadrants has a little bit of write-up on what they represent so if you do take uh, buy the book it has a lot of that in there as well so that's kind of the cole's notes the cliff notes of of the medicine wheel it can be seen as a lot of different things because it, it does represent everything on earth there's an origin story that goes along with it in anishinaabe teachings that talks about the four different people that came together, the, the white people, the black people, Asian people, and the indigenous people coming together, how we each represent a different um, element. It's a beautiful story, but I don't have the time to get into that today. But um, I do encourage you to, to, you know, Google it. If there's elders that work with your community, to ask them these questions too. These are really good questions. If we, I could take a whole hour, at, uh, honestly, answering all these questions. I was going to say that this seems like it's a whole other hour that we need at least. Yeah. <laughs> Probably for each of these topics, I think we could have done a whole hour. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think that that gives people so much uh, inspiration and so many jumping points to follow what has spoken to them through this past hour and what uh what they want to do with all of this new information i hope that it's inspired a lot of people i know that it has because i can see the chat and how happy people are to have been here with us today and thank you sarah ann it's it's just been incredible what a perfect way to start the week yeah thank you for having me it's been great and i'm gonna put in the chat here uh i do work in schools too so if there's any interest i'll leave my email here or maybe there's some burning questions that didn't get answered. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, contact great. me. And uh, I have a website as well. Um, if you are interested in working together or, if, yeah, like I said, have any. Um, Sarah, and I think you, you want to set your chat to everybody because it just went to our oh. hosts and panelists. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, we did. I we shared. Uh, we shared your um, website not too long ago in the okay. chat there. I'm, I can share your email to everybody. I have my chat set. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that'd be great. And then if you have any questions or if you want to connect another way, you can contact me there. Or, yeah, I answer more questions. And um, yeah, this was really awesome. lovely. Thank you for all joining me. I don't even know how many of you are all here, but some it's I think because we're around lunchtime for some folks among all the many time zones that are joining us there was mm -hmm. some folks that dropped off but yeah it was we peaked at about 150 classrooms all joined in together here today cool. and many more will be watching the recording I know that so um yeah we're I'm gonna announce prizes here before we end and say goodbye um and I want to make sure that we get everyone's email if you were one of the prize winners that um, were selected out of all the so many questions. Thank you so much for everyone's enthusiasm and the amazing questions. Um, and uh, I'm going to give a plug to just Strong Nations one more time. Um, I think Hill is in the chat helping out too as well. Thank you, Hillary, who's been behind the scenes. 
Uh, so again, thank you to Strong Nations and thank you so much. Um, so cool, Tolton, Robert Goldsmith, who helped introduce us and uh, was on, on screen today. There you are again, thank you so much. We really appreciate everything you do and for helping get Sarah Ann's book out into the world. What a blessing. And uh, we're going, we have prizes today from uh, three of our partners along with also from the Take Me Outside store. So we have $25 to give away to the Take Me Outside store. We have $25 to give away to the Outdoor Learning store, one of our partners. And we also have uh, $50 to give away to Mountain Equipment Company. And Hill is putting in some links in the chat to say thank you there. And uh, we also have three copies of the Walking Curriculum book um, from Imagine Ed. And I think that this book would go really well with um, some of the teachings that Sarah Ann has shared today. It's really about um, tuning into the land and noticing. And um, we have three of those to give away to folks as well. And so if your name was called or is going to be read out, then just send your email into the chat. You can set the chat to just be host and panelists. So not, it's not going to everybody. Uh, so the Take Me Outside store gift card went to the Finch Public School 4 or 5 class in Toronto, Ontario. So if you haven't sent Hill your email, please do. And the winner of the OLS gift card, thank you to Happy Hearts for sending their question in or the questions. I know some people are sending more than one. So Happy Hearts, congratulations for OLS uh, gift card. Uh, Mrs. Veriard's class won a gift card to Mac and the three walking curriculum prize winners, uh, Rich Larson in grade three, congratulations, Cindy Zintel was the second winner there, and Kyle Lichtenwald's class was the third winner of the walking curriculum book. So yes, thank you. I see some emails coming in to us there. Thank you so much. We'll follow up with also an email saying, um, connecting you to uh, web Sarah Ann's website, Strong Nations, resources, and getting all prepared for tomorrow too, because we have the whole week of fun. And I hope that you send in some photos of what you've created today um, after Sarah Ann has given us some, maybe the best homework, maybe the most fun homework that we could possibly ask for. <laughs> yeah. And if you'd, I'd love to share it. If you could take me on Instagram too, I'd love to see what you're making as well. Um, I will add my my Instagram handle as well because mm -hmm. I love perfect yeah looks like Sarah Ann might have frozen there but hopefully her chat comes through but we have shared it in the chat as well so thank you so much uh I'm going to I know you're a few minutes over time there sorry Sarah Ann you you froze there for a sec but it looks you got it in the chat there so that's great <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to uh, say goodbye here, say haichka, thank you, uh, and hokuminam here. Uh, so much appreciation for your time and energy, expertise, and um, Sarah Ann and Robert, it's always a pleasure, and thanks Hill behind the scenes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.